Welcome, Web of Wires. The family tree is such a diverse group of people. You have that cousin with the awesome basement, the grandparent that won't let you leave without money or a fun trinket, and that uncle that got a 39 on Metacritic. What's worse, the fact that we're related or that he's worth more than a pack of gum? We are all familiar with building up tons of excitement over a new product, only to be met by disappointment once it's in your hands. But I'm not here to talk about the Fallout 76s and Cyberpunk 2077s of the world, no no. I'm here to talk about the games destined to fail. Games that just did not get good reviews, if any at all. Now, I have spending issues and no time to play games, so I figured it might be fun to grab a couple of these bad apples off my shelf and give them a whirl. Yes, I just grabbed this game off my shelf before Elden Ring, leave me alone. Let me get Google Translate out for this. Grand Prix. I'm with you on that, I don't know any of those words mean either. This is one of the few games I got imported via my family in Norway. Flåklypa Grand Prix is a traditional Norwegian stop-motion film that shows up around Christmas time, and 47 years later they released this game adaptation. My family says it's good, Steam says meh, and Metacritic is clueless. So let's just give it a spin. The first thing it asks me is to pick a pride flag. I don't see bisexual on here, so I'll just pick the first one I see. Looks like we also get to create a profile. So here I am, and it's time to race. It's been a while since I've played a racing game, so a whole list of controls would be wonderful. I didn't need them anyways. Immediately, the controls are a huge jump scare. They feel sluggish the first few seconds, and then snappy and reliable after the initial boost. I was making turns like a madman, and then I'd hit one thing, and it's back to that buildup. I played about 25 minutes of the game before hitting a roadblock. I beat all eight tutorial levels, but nothing unlocked. What's worse is I can't read Norwegian, and I'm too lazy to translate each menu, so in my eyes, I softlock the game. Nice. Knarten gifter seg. Yep, you guessed it. Another Norwegian game. This is another movie adaptation, except this time it's about this twig named Nerton that wants to get married. Look into his eyes. Who wouldn't want to marry this thing? The game itself is... A game. Just like the other game, there's no bisexual pride flag, so I'll just stick with this one again. It's another minigame collection, as well as a collectathon and an open world adventure game. You waddle around as the little guy version of Nerton. You need to get three collectibles in order to unlock each minigame. You then play the minigame and repeat the same process eight more times. This little open world area feels like a cheap excuse to pad out the gameplay. I beat all nine minigames in about 30 minutes. I missed a few collectibles on the way, so I wasn't able to get married, but that's the least of my concerns. While some of the minigames were, again, definitely minigames, others were super fleshed out. My favorite was this little 2D platformer. The controls were super smooth, with a clean platforming environment to complement them. It reminds me a lot of the GBA SpongeBob platformers. Nothing super crazy, but fun enough to be memorable. Or this other minigame, which is just straight up a doodle jump ripoff. But it's doodle jump, so I'm okay with that. Rec Room Games for DS, not to be confused with this Rec Room, is a cheap minigame collection that also released on the Wii. Just like Nerton, most of the minigames suck to put it lightly. The 20 they have either last way too long or have nothing to them, leaving you with about 30 minutes of gameplay. Each game encourages local multiplayer as if it was designed for the Wii and then ported to the DS. Most will let you connect another DS system for local multiplayer, but in a fast paced game like table tennis, it can't keep up. Even at that, I don't know who would want to play table tennis on local multiplayer because the paddle controls horribly and often bugs itself out. It doesn't even register the touchscreen sometimes, but if you aren't lucky to play against a friend, it forces you to play against a bot, almost as if every game is unplayable without friends. Even in something like bowling, you don't need an opponent to play against, but no, here's Bot Jerry joining the terrorist force. But then the other half of the games feel great with the touchscreen. Darts, ladder toss, air hockey, I can't imagine these versions playing well on the Wii. So no matter what platform you're on, you aren't getting a very consistent experience. And now with the game targeting an even younger audience with loads of expensive cosmetics and platform jumps to almost every system but the ones that matter, it's hard to appreciate the game for being anything more than a cash grab. I've been criticizing the wrong record this entire time, haven't I? Family Guy, back to the multiverse. I got this game at a garage sale for two quarters. I then logged the game into my game collection and all my faith in humanity was lost the second I saw how much it was worth. Family Guy is one of those shows you can turn on and immediately know what you're getting into. The humor is consistent from episode to episode, even all these years later. And for the most part, this humor translates well into the game. Dialogue back and forth feels natural, and the jokes are creative nonetheless. But for the video game dialogue, your side quests and story progressions, they're all bland and cheap. The controls play as well as they look, for better or for worse, and the cell shading is quite decent, but there's nothing in here that really screams fun. It feels like a collage of Family Guy episodes that were translated into a game by some college kid with basic Unity skills. It wasn't good, but it also wasn't the worst game i played. I'd honestly say it was one of the most complete games I've played. But it's also Family Guy, so if you like the show's humor, 
it would be hard to say it's necessarily bad. Just please, for my sanity and for your sanity, do not spend more than $5 to play this game. These guys are stupid. I've heard a lot of positivity about Naughty Bear. I've heard friends talk greatly about it, I've seen people online rave about it, and the whole reason I bought this game was because the employee at my local game store said it was good. So I'm going to be the first to say it, I hate Naughty Bear. I know, I know, but I truly believe that the 43 it got on Metacritic was deserved, if not lower. The main reason I say this is because Naughty Bear itself as a concept is super funny. A rogue teddy bear goes around brutally murdering his friends because he wasn't invited to the birthday party. I don't know how they did this, but they copied Ubisoft with having a great idea with the most boring gameplay possible. Controls aside, I was never able to feel what the game was. It felt like with all these cute visuals, silly voice lines, and beautiful animation that it was for kids 13 and up, but it has some of the most brutal and disturbing kills in a video game that I've seen. But there's no blood or stuffing going everywhere, so the corpses just look like someone didn't realize they were sitting on a teddy bear for an extended period of time. The game doesn't know what it wants to do with itself, which completely ruined my enjoyment. I see why people like it, it has charm, and I feel like it could really succeed in today's market with a modern remaster by Square Enix or something, but all we could do is hope. The last Walking Dead, sorry, Survival Instinct kicked in. <laughs> Survival Instinct is one of those games that banks off the popularity of its franchise rather than being fun. Around that same time, Telltale's The Walking Dead released, so parents would go into GameStop, hear about how good The Walking Dead was, pick up the one with Daryl on the front cover, and Christmas is ruined. I would know, I was one of those kids. Back when I played the game, I got stuck on the first level and never played it again. And now going back to the game today, that exact thing almost happened again. You basically have to travel around the country searching for supplies, and that's about it. But the game is so bland, it's just a linear looter shooter with boring combat. It's not one of those funny tee hee game so bad kind of games. There's just literally nothing to laugh about. Even the voice actors sound like they just want to get up and leave. It wasn't as bad as everyone made it out to be, it still didn't leave a good impression on me. I have nothing to say, I just wasted an hour of my life for nothing. Playing all those games took a lot of life out of me, so I decided to retire early. Now that I'm retired, I don't really have too much to do with my time, so maybe I'll finally get around to Elden Ring. I'll never learn. <laughs>